right. <clears throat> so, um, start off. How did the idea to start IOTA come about? Like, I know there was a rift with Soda's leadership, but can you elaborate on what specific issues went down? The biggest issues with the rift that there was with uh, Soda, point blank, was, uh, you know, people were being treated poorly. Um, there just wasn't – it was being run more like a dictatorship. Uh, it didn't matter what drivers wanted. It didn't matter what people thought. Uh, it was going to be the owner's way or no way. Uh, it had gotten to the point where uh, now that we have gotten further into the off season and heading towards the new season, that points champions weren't being paid. Um, you know, none of that was done. Just overall bad leadership, and we. We wanted it to become what it was supposed to be, which was a driver's association. Um, you know, now we sit here today, uh, drivers actually have a say, their opinions matter, they count. Um, the other big thing that uh, people were very unhappy about was uh, the original Soda Series uh, back in the 80s and early 90s was a uh, – actually a non-profit, uh, and people got very upset that it was set up as a LLC and that all the money was being turned into his pocket uh, while being represented as the old way that the series was run. All right. So I'm not going to name names, but I'm sure you know who, but someone from Soda came to me the other day claiming that IOTA was like infringing on Soda's trademarks and was raising the possibility of legal action. I was wondering if you could like comment on that allegation or if it's just sour grapes from what seems like a messy divorce. Absolutely. Um, number one, yes, in some aspects, it is a messy divorce. But the biggest thing is, is after doing all our due diligence and our research and everything else, he has no trademarks, he has no copyrights. Um, the last time anything was filed for copyright was in 1997 with the Short Course Off-Road Drivers Association Incorporated, which was the original series. Uh, the trademark at that same time was what the uh, federal government, the trademark uh, commission, I believe it's called, is what is called dead. There is no trademark left anymore. Um, at this point, the only reason that uh, we feel that this is happening is because of the fact that he has now lost uh, his series. Um, many people have said it was the right idea, wrong person at the time. Um, so uh, do we know about the threat of legal action? Yes, we do. Uh, we have received his letters. Uh, we have spoken with with lawyers. Um, the, he is trying to use the past company uh, to try and say he has this or has that, uh, when in reality they are two entirely different organizations. Uh, he didn't purchase the old organization of the Soda Incorporated. He is... Uh, short Course Off-Road Drivers Association, LLC. So while he has some of the same name, he doesn't share the entire business entity. He never purchased the old entity, so to speak. Got it. Now, when people hear of a racing split, they'll usually think of like Andy Carr in the 90s, which set that fourth back to the point where they still haven't recovered today. For you personally, are there any worries about what this could mean for sports and short course in the Midwest? Or do you think having alternatives coexist would be a good thing for the sport as a whole? I think with what we are doing and the goals we have, I think that our series is going to provide and show in the long run that we will be the premier series for the sportsmen to come race. We are setting up ourselves to be in a position uh, to continue to grow and to continue to cater to the sportsmen. Um, while we love the professionals and it's, we love watching them, uh, and you know they're welcome to come run with us as little kids.
questions about any time they'd like. Um, our big focus is being on the sportsman. We want to make sure that for uh, years to come, that this is a, uh, a very realistic and continue to uh, have a growing plan uh, to continue to have places for kids to you know, come in and race for the people who maybe have done their time in the professionals and want to come back just to have fun on the weekend. Uh, you know, like I say, we have people from five years old all the way up to 70. Uh, some of them uh, do race the Pro Series. Some of them race the Pro Series uh, their entire career. Uh, one of the gentlemen that, you know, we have racing with us has done the Mint 400. He's done all the big, you know, desert races. He's done all the races up here in, you know, in Wisconsin in the early days, even through Torque and camp and all of them, but has decided that he doesn't want to continue to do the, the pro series, so he has come back down to come down to the sportsman series and, you know, is teaching and showing the next level of racers the knowledge he's earned over the years. Okay. <clears throat> so what growing pains or other challenges do you think will come with not only running a series in its first year, but also having to compete with Soda and really any other series in the area? Like if I were a driver looking for a grassroots series to race in, why would I come to IOTA? The biggest thing with IOTA is we're not out here to compete with the big series like Camp. Um, we are out here to cater to the sportsmen. It is a series for the drivers, by the drivers. Um, to be honest with you, in, in my opinion, soda is no competition to us. Right. Uh, soda to me, like I said earlier, uh, right idea, wrong person. Uh, to run a series, you can't go and run a race and be the president or the owner of the series plus still race. Um, and with other series that is with another series that's in the area, I won't use the name. Um, that's exactly the situation it is. It's looking out for his own race. It, it comes down to he wanted a place to race. Um, here, I am not a race car owner. I, I, I'm not a driver. I am merely a person who has a passion and a love for the sport. And I am not looking out for any one class or any one person. I am looking out for the sport as a whole or the series as a whole. I want to see the best show put on. I want to see the best results for all the drivers, uh, you know, as the president. Um, and in the same breath, we have a board that is made up of drivers, you know, that have still have their input. Um, we run everything with votes, nothing by this is just the way it's going to be. Um, our meetings are open to anybody, anytime, not just the board. We don't hide anything. We don't keep everything behind locked doors. If somebody has a question, they can ask and we'll answer it. So, um now, obviously, racing is very expensive, and, and I've seen a bunch of ways that series try to cut down costs, like waiving entry fees and all that. What is IOTA's game plan to make racing as affordable as, as affordable as possible while still managing the costs of operating? What we have done is we have put together a membership package that includes a big chunk of the normal costs with some discount to it, um, as well as the fact that we have kept our entry fees uh, lower, uh, again, by the decision of the drivers from the classes. We have also done it now where you get a lot more seat time than you would in other series to make the more bang for your buck. Um, we are not, you know, and then we want to also start increasing sponsorships for classes and so on and so forth to increase the payouts while keeping low entry fees. And um, on the topic of entry fees, 
there's still there's still over a month left until the opener, but how are entries looking so far? Like can you give any specific numbers? Um, numbers are starting to look good. They're starting to pick up rapidly. Um, we have just gone live with our website and our memberships and everything uh, within the last few days. So everything is continuing to roll in. Um, preliminary numbers as we've been doing our talking with people. Um, we think right now our opening weekend, we are probably going to be somewhere plus or minus 100 cars, maybe a little bit more. Um, we have picked up a lot of new classes that uh, weren't really opened in the other series that's around here. Um, we picked up some used ATVs. We picked up uh, stock trucks now. Um, basically, we have made a home um, for everybody. I think right now we have, I believe, the count is 16 classes. <clears throat> so all of your races this year are taking place at Gravity Park. How did that deal come about? Yeah. Um, we were familiar with Gravity Park, obviously, from another series. Um, we really, no matter what, I wanted to make sure that we could guarantee everybody a season. I didn't want to be a one or two race show, uh, and everybody uh, that got together in the beginning said the same thing. So we started negotiating with Gravity Park. Um, with the thought process that uh, as we move forward from here, we will continue to grow to other tracks. We will be adding more races. Um, but Gravity Park will be kind of our home track, if you call it that. Um, it's a nice facility, lots of room. Uh, the owner is good to work with. You know, he's kind of still that uh, old school, honest man. Um, and he's been a pleasure to work with to this point, and we you know, look forward to many years to come with not only that track, but a lot of other tracks in the state here. So, for you personally, what if you could raise that? If you could bring IOTA to any track in the area or anywhere really, where would you like to go? To be honest with you, the goal is to get us into some of the bigger tracks. The champ is racing now. Um, we're working uh, on opening the doors to possibly racing up at Park River. Uh, there's another track in northwestern Wisconsin uh, that we're working on trying to possibly get a race up there. Um, if We're waiting to hear a lot more as to what is happening with Champ. Uh, we're under the impression and hearing stuff through the lines that um, there's been an offer to purchase Champ and that they may be moving away, uh, where they may only come back in this area for a few races. So that's kind of where we're positioning ourselves to try and step up into that spot where we can make sure that all of those sportsmen do have a place to race at different tracks that they may be used to. Okay. <clears throat> so... Um... What's your philosophy then for marketing and media? Like, do you plan on live streaming races, or do you believe more in just posting highlights online to get people's attention and you get encourage them to come to the races? I believe more in getting them to the race, uh, and this is why because we're trying to you know we're trying to create a family environment. Um, you know, kind of that short track Saturday night feel. You know, excitement. We get the families involved. The kids are down there. We have a uh, program put together just for the kids. Uh, we call it the Kids Club. Um, they can come down and there's activities for them. And, you know, uh, so we really want the family to be involved, not just looking at a monitor at home uh, watching the races. You know, uh, we want that interaction between fans and drivers and, and the little children of the kids to hopefully get these young kids interested to continue the sport for generations to come. Um, kind of our belief is if, if you don't get them to the racetrack, you can't get them interested. And if you can't get them interested, there's nowhere for the sport to go. It, it, the sport begins to die because there's no, no new generation coming up to pick it up. <clears throat> All right. So it's probably too early to look deep into the future, but what's your vision for IOTA? Like, how would you want to grow the series after this year, especially after what you said with Champ and everything? 
I would like to get to the point where I see us, uh, you know, running probably in the neighborhood of 10 races a year uh, scattered throughout Wisconsin uh, and into Michigan. Um, I don't know if we'll ever get over to the Minnesota side of it, over to like ERX or anything like that. Um, but I can I continue to see us growing and continuing to make the series better and better. Uh, you know, more investments into uh, making the series better, making it better for the drivers, better payouts, um, and continuing to build it not just for the drivers but with the drivers. So, before we wrap this up, is there anything else you would like to add? It's, I think for them, I mean, really, we have touched on what the core, the core of IOTA is. It's, it's for the drivers, by the drivers, and it's about kids and family. You know, we do everything we can to keep the politics out of it and just come back to the purest form of racing we can get. 